Yo, what's going on everybody? It's the Bearded Buffalo coming to you today with some more Motorsport Manager on PC. We just finished the third race of the season. We are making our way towards the Portuguese, Portuguese Grand Prix. Tondela. Uh, just got to get back into the groove of things. We've got emails to take a look at after the races always do. So this is the practice news car condition update gonna take 46 hours for them to repair the car an interview for the evening herald you've had some time to get used to the team now what are your main worries at the moment we really need to improve our car's performance level upgrading the hq hq i'm thinking long term our driver lineup is weak so we have to think of some changes i don't have any worries at all the team looks great um I think upgrading HQ is really my main worry. I am thinking long term, and actually our chairman liked that. Outstanding. I thought he would not be pleased. Uh, race winner, Andre Sabato. Woo, we won. That was flipping awesome. Thanks, boss. Um, and he gets a plus 15 morale for two weeks and improve parts and take a look at what we're doing as far as improvement goes. Looking to improve the engine right now. How we sit everywhere else, 80% everywhere else we've got brakes at 90 and 83 i think we'll let the engine at oh just kidding it's an engine and a brake let's remove that brake and get the other engine in there and let's repair the engines uh repair them i mean improve their reliability for pete's sake and let's also go to design new parts and we are going to spend the most money and look to improve our engine because that is a weakest spot as of right now so for our first improvement we will add plus 25 to max to top speed no risk of breaking a rule with this piece so that's what we're going to go with bully engines are up to 100 percent where should we go to now gearbox or brakes i think we'll go gearbox and that will be ready one day after the race so still should be in the high 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 90s 99 or something let's continue on And we're going to get some results from other series. Again, I don't really care all that much. So we just clicked through those pretty quick. And the new engine is finished. And we have a sponsor offer as well. Let's first start. Engine build is complete. Let's go to improve parts. And whichever one of these gearboxes at 88, we will remove. And we will add the other engine actually maybe do that and see if maybe this engine can be serviceable as far as reliability goes prior to the start of the Portuguese Grand Prix and one sponsor offer from Carne Blanco 10 races 200,000 I'm gonna let it sit 10 races is a long time and I'm hoping that our marketability is increased by the time that those 10 races are up so uh, again doing something that I would hate as a viewer but I'm passing up on money now it's time to pick our sponsor for the upcoming race. We're going to stick with this Jandermole Media um, because we still end up way in the black here. And 8th or above is pretty doable versus 2nd or above. is a little bit of a dice roll for us still right now. And part fitting. We'll fit some parts. How did the reliability of the new engine go? That's the question. Only up to 66. I don't think I'm going to risk it quite yet. That's That'd be a pretty big risk. Um, and top speed is useful here. I think we'll stick with the parts that we have currently applied there. And I think that really means I'm going to stick with the parts I have applied everywhere. So now it's time to head to the Portuguese Grand Prix. I will check in with you after practice. All right, practice is drawing to a close. There's about 20 seconds left on the clock. But we're fast forwarding through. I think we did okay on the setups today. Uh, I, but I'm really not sure how great or not great active knowledge. We only got level two uh, on race trim level one on both super soft and soft tires. So practice is okay. Not great. Okay. So for driver knowledge, we're going to go light footed on soft tires and race trim for Sabato and then race trim and pit stop guru refueling for Garrard car setup actually turned out to to look okay we've got two greats and an excellent for sabato and two excellents and a great for gerard we'll see if we can perfect these a little bit speed balance used to be excellent 
but the percentage is better, so I'm guessing the downforce is better. So I'm going to go this way one, and we'll increase the downforce a little bit. Take a little risk here. And see if that's going to be better for Sabato, who's starting in 20th place. It is a 32 lap race. Can only get 8 to 10 tops out of the super soft. 12 to 14 out of the soft. So we're going to have to go to the soft and just look to go maybe 11, 11, 10, 10 or something like that. Um, but we'll see how the race goes. And refueling, we'll leave it at a full 13. And how about for Gerard? I'm going to leave it as is. It's at 98%. Pretty good. 10 to 12 out of the super soft for Gerard. 14 to 16 out of the soft tire. And we start Gerard on the super soft and see what happens here. And we'll go with a full tank of fuel for him as well. Driver strategy attack and overtake at the start of the race for both. Peak at the starting grid. Sabato in 20th. Gerard in 17th. And now we head to five red lights for the Portuguese Grand Prix at Tondela. Let's see how we can do it. Firebird MRT. See if we can stay hot with podium finishes. And let's just hope Gerard can stay on the track. Sabato up into 16th as Gerard has maintained 17th. Sabato on the move on the soft tires. And Gerard just kind of held still. Now up into 14th as they switch positions, but Sabato jumping into 15th. Uh, first start of, or for the first lap of the race, we are not doing too bad. I'm not sure why I'm struggling to say that. And now Garrard up into 13th, Sabato to 14th. Four wide. Garrard battles into 11th. Now we just hope Garrard can stay on the track. Sabato into 11th. Garrard falls back to 13th. Must have just taken a wrong line, just like he did there. Sabato now up into 9th. Garrard into 11th. And Sabato doing a bang-up job on the soft tires. Shoots the gap there. Up into 7th and 8th now. Firebird MRT on the move. Let's just pause for a second and see. We are the only driver still pushing hard, so we're going to back this down. Engine mode down too high and tires to neutral tire temp looks pretty good for Gerard and engine mode to high and push for Sabato just because he's well no on to neutral as well because he needs to make those tires last we'll see how he does in this first stint with that soft tight light footed soft tire boost he might be all right a yellow fl yellow flag Alex Rogers is crashed yellow flag in sector one no overtaking here in Portugal but now Gerard on the attack after falling down the order is back to pushing. And Sabato continues to fall down the order. What's happened here? If Gerard's tires down to 49%. Only on only serving lap number six. Some folks are pitting. Maybe there's been an incident that I just missed. Gerard up into fifth. No, folks on some super softs are pitting. The leader pit and is all on Gerard just locked up. I saw him lock up at the corner of my eye. Tire wear down to 35%. Gerard is going to have to do a stint on the soft tire. Uh, no doubt about that to be able to make this a two-stop race. Gerard and Sabato battling. All we hope is that they don't battle so hard that they take each other out. Clear track in front. 28% left on Gerard's super soft tires. I think we have to bite the bullet here. I might be shouting. And go attack and overtake. And go on to the soft tires for Gerard. 14 to 16 laps he can go. We need him to actually basically go the full 13 that the fuel is going to allow. And the condition of the parts looks fine. So Gerard pushing into the pits on lap 8 of the Grand Prix and struggling gets past there we gotta drop him back so we're gonna go to medium and push on the tires we'll go fat but 
we'll go back and focus on Sabato, who is 6.4 seconds behind Beauchamp and is closing up while Sabato is closing up. Slowly but surely the gap. Beauchamp's tires are looking very worn and he is likely going to be heading to the pits here. As Sabato will easily be able to stretch. Oh, crud. Oh, I've just made a crucial error. Sabato is going to run out of fuel. He has 0.36 laps left of fuel. I can't believe I've done that. I'm sorry, mate. I can't believe that I've done that. I may have just taken Sabato entirely out of the race. Sending him around for one more lap. He's going to have to do two-thirds of the lap on no fuel. And I am 80% sure that everyone is going... Well, not everyone, but many people are going to pass him out of fuel now. Moving at a snail's pace. Here comes Beauchamp around for the race lead. Gerard's dropped a position. And he actually pits from second place, so... As Gerard now moves up into fourth place, Gerard looking to get back on the podium after a disastrous race in round three of the European Racing Series, putting the pressure on Antonov, but we see Garuda racing here in a 1-2 currently. That's not what we want to see. Third place is pitting. Antonov maybe going for a three-pit strategy. A few drivers pitting, maybe looking at a three-stop strategy. We are sticking to the two-stop, if at all possible. It's all going to depend on how Garrard can manage the tire wear. Garrard now into third place. Six, 11 seconds behind second jaw for Garuda. And Sabato is now into eighth. Let's take a peek at Sabato. Still pushing. We need to drop him down to high and push for a while on Garrard. Sabato hoping, looking to overtake uh, John's Dodi. John's Dottier, John Sadir for fourth place on the gearbox. We're going to give Sabato about a half a lap to make this pass because I think John Sadir is holding us up with worse tire wear than we have. Definitely holding us up now. And that's it. That's Chicane. We're going to medium and neutral as sixth place Antonov on the super soft is catching up. And Gerard, 23% left tire wear. Gerard will have him push and attack into the pits with 20 lap, 12 laps to go in the Grand Prix. Back onto Sask for Gerard. 12 laps to go, Gerard, as once he comes out of the pit, will not be able to push. It's Sabato who's going to have a close race with those two drivers. We're going to go up to high and push as Sabato's going to go one more lap. Up into attack with 1.5 laps of fuel left. Sabato will come into the pits on the next lap. There will be, what, nine laps remaining after the pit stop. Just seems like a major stretch for Sabato to be able to have those soft tires go nine laps. So, or super softs, excuse me. So we're going to go into the softs here. Nine laps left. What do we have for park condition? Everything looks great. Front wing is not awesome, but it's only 57. So we'll put enough in to be able to at least push a little bit at the end of the race if we need to, to get around someone. So, And Gerard has done a magnificent job picking up the slack that I've created for Sabato by letting him run out of fuel. 14 second lead on fourth place, Cavalcanti, and a 30, but a 34 second gap up to Jaw. So Garuda likely going to finish one, two, unless they experience some reliability issues or have a crash. Sabato moves up into sixth place. 
and is on the gearbox of Antonov. Looks to make the move into fifth. Jaw had to make one final pit stop, so that's going to allow Gerard to close up a little bit, but not much. Still 15 seconds, and Sabato now in fifth. Okay, Sabato, we need it. A 3-4 would be outstanding if Garuda's going to go 1-2. We need all the points we can get here in Portugal. Both still have excess fuel. Santa Ana is retired. I wish that would have said something about one of the two Garuda drivers retiring. Let's take a quick peek to see if they have any issues. Beauchamp looks good and Jaw looks fine. As we start, Gerard crosses the start finish line for the final lap of the Portuguese Grand Prix. Sabato now with a three second lead on uh, John's Dottier. And Beauchamp's already finished the race in first place here. Gerard continuing to make his stand to say he's on equal footing with Sabato finishes third as Sabato finishes fourth uh, major mistake on my part otherwise Sabato may have had a chance to challenge for the race lead there with that just fire start but a 3-4 for Firebird MRT here in Portugal Jean-Pierre Gerard on the podium the third step of the podium and the drivers championship now sees Beauchamp and Sabato tied atop the ranking Jaw in still holding steady in third with 70 and Gerard with 59. Uh, Beauchamp and Sabato tied at 76. And the team's championship standings now Firebird trailing by 11 points to Garuda. Holding steady in, in second while Eastwood is at third with 103. Alright, so we get to see our driver improvements from that race again. Sabato continues his crazy pace. Uh, towards what's going to end up being three and change and Gerard has a normal improvement rate but um, he the relationship with the mechanic did go up we took second our expected result was third so chairman's happiness goes up now to 94 percent and marketability goes up 0.33 and we made over a mil and we saved a mil for next year's car first things first check the mail Car condition, 24 hours this time only. That's nice. And an interview with the World Sports Network. Andre Sabato was beaten by Gene Francis Beauchamp today. Would you consider bringing him in next season? Beauchamp's really old, so no, not really. Um, I have 100% belief in our drivers. And Beauchamp gets a special condition. Driver won't even discuss terms with you. And he says, how dare you? I didn't say anything bad about you. Um, he wins at Tondela. All right, let's get to developing our next engine. So we'll go top speed plus 25 to max, and we don't do qualifying, so just top speed plus 30, and that's all we're really going to be able to do. But now a max of 269 with a uh, starting of 231. So we'll build that part, and while that part builds, we will continue to improve the reliability of the other engine that we just built. Some new sponsors coming in. Jean-Pierre Gerard. G Firebird MRT's Jean-Pierre Gerard has revealed his interest in the burgeoning role of online racing simulators. It's just a great way to practice your overtaking maneuvers, said the 24-year-old 24, 24 who has been regularly competing in online tournaments. He added, nothing can ever replace the real thing, of course, but if sim racing can help my skills in any way, then I'm very happy to do it. He's probably a uh, paying member of iRacing. Uh, so he can try... Moves in the sim he would never try in the race. Overtaking plus one and marketability plus five. That lasts for 18 weeks. Ooh, we've got a vote coming up. We'll be voting. We'll be, we'll, ah, geez, sorry. We're meeting next week to mull over the merits of spec gearboxes. So the potential rule change would see the team's current gearbox replaced with the standard GMA approved gearbox. Some around the paddock seem to think that it would be quite a loss to see gearbox development stopped with technical expert marie haskell telling us i hate the idea of limiting the team's ability to improve motorsport is as much about technology as anything else i have to agree let me real quick just go in here and get to improve parts and while we continue to wait for the engine to be designed we will get back to improving 
the gearbox. Two new sponsor offers as well. Let's we'll continue on. We'll look at that right before the end of the next race. Or er, right before the start of the next race. And here we go. A new vote has begun at the Global Motorsport Association. It's about spec gearboxes. This time I do care. It says it would benefit equality focused teams, Eastwood, Silva, Archer, and would not benefit traditional teams, Firebird, Vexala, and ZRT. I think I'm actually going to use two because um, the gearbox is actually quite important for us. So, uh, just kidding. I'm going to use one and I'm going to vote against. So, we'll save one for some other vote. That leaves it pretty even. Okay, we'll use both. And we'll skip to the end. So, it's already five to th four. Ooh, eight to four is how it ends up. A couple of people using double votes to vote no. So, spec gearboxes will not be included next season. The new engine design has finished. I guess I wasted my time improving the gearbox because it didn't do anything at all. And we'll start improving the new engine. And the report on Ardennes. 22 lap race, 3.61 miles. 40% chance of rain on race day. And Gene Pierre Garrard is asking for a test track. Test track. Sorry, can't afford it. Four sponsor offers now on the table. One for slot three, second or above for 700000 A 3.2 home race bonus in Russia. We still have Jandermole. So we wouldn't get anything because I'm going to continue to use Jandermole as my sponsor that I'm bringing to the race. So we're going to leave that open. Three for slot number four or three, whatever slot number that is. And six race deal for 150 per race, eight race for 500,000. That's garbage. And four races for 450. So what's this turn out to? Six races turns out to 900,000. This turns out to a little bit less than that, I think, for those four. So we'll go with Maxwell's beer, 150,000 per race for six races. And I'm starting to break down and think we're never going to get anything but this Carne Blanca. A carne Blanco is that white meat um, so I'm gonna take it I guess um, and we'll take our 200,000 now and 200,000 per race wish I would have done that way earlier now Ooh, what's going on here Andre Sabato Luigi Marchetta is being an absolute nightmare not only does he constantly belittle me when talking to press but now he's saying I'm not ERS material what should I do Channel your anger into racing or get your head down. So we either have aggressive or hard worker. I think he already has the hard worker trait. So I'm going to say channel your anger into racing. Eighth or above for Jandermole for an additional 500,000. And let's take a look. How have we done with the engine? Only 63. Again, not worth the risk. But we can move Sabato to the other new engine that we have. And everything else can remain the same. Ready to head to Germany for the Ardennes, the German Grand Prix at Ardennes. I'll check in with you guys after practice. All right, so we're down to the last 15 seconds of practice, but I think Sabato is going to get a... No, does not get an additional lap, uh, but a second shy of getting one additional lap to help us build our knowledge base. Uh, but we do finish 1-3 here in the standings, and I think we did good with the standings. Gerard's setup is, gr is great. And uh, Sabato's, uh, I think I've got some tweaking to do, but let's take a look. And it's time to get ourselves set up for the race, and it is already raining, but it is just barely wet, and it is going to go back to dry. So we're going to go out on dry tires. I imagine the rest of the field will as well. Um, we will race trim in soft tires. I'm glad that I got level 1 on s some sort of compound. I wish I'd have got level 1 on the super soft. In fact, there's no reason to do soft tires, so we'll go light-footed. Actually, I'm going to use this uh, one I've never used before. Super Overtake Mode for Sabato. So an, action, an extra engine mode is unlocked. Super Overtake, allowing even more power at the cost of higher fuel, fuel, fuel burn and condition loss rate. So we'll have to use it sparingly, but it does exist there now. And for Garrard, we'll use the race trim and pit stop guru refueling per the usual. And actually, we're looking pretty good here. Um, let's take a look at Sabato first. 
and we'll back out here past the eight. Ooh, interesting. Right below the O, and that should be really good for Gerard. He's got a he had to change the camber of the tire to increase the setup. 12 to 14 laps, and we are going to be pitting here in the first five. I think I'm going to decrease the few. Only nine laps of fuel. It's only a 22 lap race. We gotta remember that. So maybe we'll just leave it full. So, well, Gerard has a fast pit stop. So we'll take Gerard down to seven laps of fuel. And we'll probably leave Sabato full. Question is do we mess with the setup at all? I think we'll maybe. I'm not going to mess with it. I'm using the setup at 97%. 10 to 12, that's fine. We're only going five, but I'm going to leave him full of nine laps because he may push a little longer. Um, we'll have to probably have Gerard pit first. For the usual attack and over... Oh, attack and super overtake for Sabato and attack and overtake for Gerard. Take a look at the lineup. 19th and 17th. I like it when my drivers can start in different lines. One line is almost always faster when you get into the first corner. When they start in the same line, um, they both could get bogged down together. But I guess they could both shoot ahead together. But now to five red lights for the German Grand Prix. I think we're in Germany. And we are starting on dry tires in the wets. But so is everyone else. The blokes that win on soft tires are not the smartest move they've ever made. We're going to change the camera angle here. How we had it set up in practice. And we're going to fast forward. Track will be drying out shortly. Sabato struggling in super overtake mode. I may take him out of it here quickly if it's not going to work for him. But great move up to the inside up into 15th. Gerard now 15th. And these guys are up and down the order in the first lap. Now up into 16th and 17th after the first lap. And some lockups, but the track is now dry. We'll have to keep a close eye. I was going to say a weather eye on the weather. Close eye on the weather. We need to take Sabato down now to just high and push. And same here. High and push. Actually, you know what? You can stay attacking on the tires because the rain's coming. Sabato in 18th now. Not, not a great start to the Grand Prix for Sabato. Other drivers are saving their tires, and I just don't understand why. Gerard up into ninth place. Sabato stuck in 18th. I wonder if the lighter car has made the major difference. We need to go down to medium here because I'm not sure how quickly the track's going to get wet. And how quickly we're going to be ready for intermediate. So we're going to hang out uh, just at medium here to hopefully be able to get another couple laps here. Bushamp was in an accident. That's what we needed. All right, we're getting close. So now let's take a look. Bushamp. A Garuda racing driver. So Santa, An Santa Ana not coming in. Evans not coming in. Dembele not coming in. Rogers not coming in. Arbeloa not coming in. Obviously, Gerard not yet. Melo, Valdez, nobody is coming in yet. So I think what we're actually going to do is pit Sabato onto Inters. And we will fill in full fuel. Five laps into the Grand Prix. And he will go on to Inters sooner rather than later. And we will see how this is going to pan out over the course of the race. Over the next course of the laps, he may be able to catch up a little bit. We're going to stick in just overtake mode. Well, we'll go super overtake here for a second. Oh, and he is catching at a pretty alarming rate the next driver. Who is on? Saw Super soft. So we're going to take him back down now because the rain's going to last for a while. So medium and neutral just for now. Let's take a peek to see what other drivers are doing. Santa Ana staying out. Evans 
staying out, Arbaloa staying out, Dembele staying out, Antonov staying out. I think we're going to pit. We're going to pit. This could be the decision that wins or loses us the race. Intermediates can go 17 to 19 laps. So we'll fill them full of fuel here. Three second pit stop. Oh, it's a good thing we did because we were at low fuel. That could have been horrible. And it's a slow pit stop. A 9 second delay on the tires for Gerard. 18 second pit stop comes out now in 5th place. 15th place. Come on. Mates in the pits. There could be a brawl in the pits. And there could be some teammates getting stacked up here. Sorry, a little freeze up there. Sabato now into 3rd with... Vinanen right in front of him and Arbaloa 15 seconds ahead but Arbaloa also on soft tires super soft tires Gerard into sixth and Sabato the race is falling into Sabato's lap uh, with some great moves on the intermediates and just pushing but Jaw is on his tail no way is Arbaloa staying out again Arbaloa in the pit so that sends Sabato into first place now we just have to handle our tires and fuel the correct way and watch the weather it looks like the rain is going to stop only four laps of fuel left for Sabato the rain's going to decrease I guess stop maybe isn't the right answer or right word Gerard now up into fourth place looks like Gerard on the gearbox basically of Santa Ana we are abusing these tires because Pit stops coming in five laps for just for fuel. Oh, Gerard side by side with Santa Ana on the outside, and the chicane makes it stick. Stick to stick. So Sabato will go two more laps on these intermediates, and we may be jumping on to the soft tires um, earlier than expected. Just so we don't have to make an additional pit stop. We'll have to make a call here as we get closer. To see if we go back on the inters for a couple laps or if we go to the soft tire to save the one pit stop. This is going to be the last lap for Sabato. We're getting to the point where we have to make the call. I was hoping I could delay it. I can't. Not much time left before the track starts to dry out again. So we got to go on to the dry weather tires. It's going to be one lap too soon. So that's going to help Gerard out. 14 to 16. Or 10 to 12. Do we go on the super soft here? Or the soft, I'm sorry. Or do we go on the super soft and maintain? I think we go on the super, on the super soft. Even though it'd be, well, it's only eight laps remaining after the pit stop but we will not be able to push we won't be able to use that push option the super overtake mode and going to overtake mode for Gerard Sabato asking to pit for inters sorry pal you can't we're gonna call Gerard into the pits to also go on the super softs we're gonna fill them up we're hopefully what will actually be an eight second pit stop and not another nine second delay. Jaw is out of the pits on the soft tire. So that was definitely the correct move. Sabato in third. We need to go down to just high and push for Gerard. I expect Sabato to be gaining heavily on Antonov. Who is now on the incorrect tire compound for the weather. Uh, but Sabato actually just held up. Can't get around. And Jaw and Garuda Racing are loving this because they have now taken a four or five second gap and opened it up to eight because Sabato got hung up. But now Sabato and Gerard sitting in two three, uh, so two the two steps on the podium with a huge gap back to Antonov who's in fourth with a 20 23 second gap between Antonov and Gerard in third. 
Gerard complaining about his tires. We're just going to go to medium and medium. And uh, not much to do here but sit back. So we'll probably fast forward a bit to the end. We are now coming to the final lap. Nothing much has changed. Sabato in second. Gerard in third as we fly around in the second lap. 12-second uh, gap to first place and a 24-second gap to fourth place for Gerard. So basically a guaranteed second and third here at the Ardennes Grand Prix in Germany. I believe it's Germany. And Sabato comes across the line in second place and Gerard right behind him in third. So a second and third for Firebird MRT. Garuda did take first, but Beauchamp the other Garuda driver takes 17th. Job break a rule? No. Uh, nobody breaks a rule. Some drive through penalties did get handed out. And Beauchamp gets fastest lap of the race. So he gets a total of six points. Let's see, what does that turn out to be? 26 to our 37. So is that a tie at the Constructors' Championship? Might be. Andre Sabato moves into first place in the Drivers' Championship by five points over Tanvir Cha with 90. Beauchamp drops all the way down to third with 82, and Gerard holds steady in fourth with 77. A uh, close little battle up here for the four drivers, uh, two Garuda and two Firebird MRT. And over to the Constructors, we do have a tie. Garuda in first with 172, Firebird in second with 172, and the next closest, Eastwood Motorsport with only 124. So a close battle after five of ten rounds in the European Racing Series. So let's move this over to the standings page so we can soak that in as I do my outro. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying this video or this series. More to come on the way. If you are liking this, uh, smash the like button, drop a comment down below. Let me know if you have any tips or things I should be thinking about that I'm not currently. Uh, feel free to subscribe for more videos like this one, more Motorsport Manager on the PC uh, or other videos that you might find along the way that I'm throwing out there that you might enjoy. I'm always open to suggestions if there are other uh, games you'd like to see me play similar to ones I currently play or something way out of left field I'm always open to uh, try them out as always thank you guys for hanging out with me and I will catch y'all in the next one